Welcome to Bada Boom. I'm Chris. On this episode of the podcast, we have on Jeremy Adams. Adams raced his way to the hearts of comic fans with his run on The Flash. Now he looks to bring light to the DC universe with Green Lantern. Adams talks fans' positive response to his Flash run and how Grounding Hal Jordan opens a whole universe of story possibilities. Listen in and bada boom. Everyone, welcome back to Bada Boom. I'm Troy, and we have on today a uh, returning guest, uh, Jeremy Adams. Thank you, Jeremy, for coming back on. I know last time you were here, we were talking a little bit about your run on The Flash and what you've done with the Super Sons movie, which we both loved. Uh, but now you're writing Green Lantern. What's it yeah. been like moving over from writing for the Flash family into Green Lantern and that <laughs> family? Hard. <laughs> no, you know, it, uh, I was so... I was so like obviously like leaving the Flash family was really like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when they said hey you get the Green Lantern would you like to do Green Lantern and I was like I don't know and then I called Jeff Johns he's like yeah you could do it I was like okay Jeff if you say I could do it you know and then um, and I got really into it and as much as the mythology and the continuity for Flash is crazy Green Lantern is unbelievably dead oh, yeah. And um, and so I was wrapping my head on how Jeff Thorne uh, ended his last series and trying to think, like, how can I pick up from there? What threads can I use to kind of propel the story forward? And there was some talk of like, well, just act like, you know, you could just say everything's back to normal. I was like, no, I'm a nerd. I have to make this make sense in the continuity of my brain. And it also just allowed me really cool um like launching points for for some new ideas or at least to investigate some of the ideas that i think because i i like jeff thorne's run it was this really kind of high concept like sci-fi thing and it ended with all these crazy things like the guardians were gone the central power battery was destroyed the source there's a source bubble there and stuff and i was like oh my gosh and then it and then they said hey we want to do something more earthbound well i had a green lantern pitch uh, about how being on earth involving uh you know earth being quarantined and it just seemed to fit in and as i started kind of setting the table with green lantern is what if you've been reading it it's like it's very much like oh he's on earth and there's a mystery happening in space and he's got this new ring and sinestro's there and and there carol's you know engaged to someone else <laughs> so i'm but it's weird uh, when you start writing a Green Lantern, it's like the pull to go off world is so strong. <laughs> and so I kind of had to put some guardrails to stop me right away. We'll get there eventually, very soon, actually. Yeah. But um, and to answer your question, instead of rambling, I was scared to death uh, <laughs> because fans were really kind to me for the Flash run. And I was having so much fun doing it that... I, you know, you always just wonder like, oh, can I, can I pull that over into this series? Can, will people respond to it? Will people like it? And uh, because at the end of the day, like art is kind of performative in a certain way. And I'm a huge nerd. So like, I want to keep doing this. So you're like, please like it so I can keep doing this, you know, <laughs> and do other things too. And so, so far people have been really kind. I, 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 you know, it's like we had to stop briefly for Night Terrors and then pick back up. And so I, I have, I've heard the criticism of like, oh, it just doesn't seem like the story's moving along. And I'm like, we're only on issue six. Like, <laughs> like, but like, that doesn't count because it feels like eight months, but it's really only six, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and then just getting, uh, you know, Philip Kennedy Johnson and I uh, have become friends and, and just talking about what he's doing in the John book and how we might intersect has been really fun, really, really fun. So I'm looking forward to kind of where Green Lantern's going to be going. And not only we, you know, we've been having these backup issues in the Green Lantern book and unbeknownst to the people that are reading them, they're going to be very critical to the story going forward. And that was something we talked about because I was very much like, I, I, they need to be, I don't want people picking up this book and paying all that money for the book and not having it be part of the overarching story, because I think that's gonna be important to find out where the other lanterns are, what's going on in space, as we heat things up and move 
toward kind of the culmination of whatever we're working toward. Uh, I want this to be the pieces that play into that. So the people that are reading it will go, oh my gosh, I know what's happening with Jessica or whatever, you know? Yeah. I feel like we don't really get a lot of time with some of the lanterns on earth. And the one that I can think of the most is Guy Gardner. And he's always (laughs) getting into even worse trouble on earth somehow than he does in space. But you mentioned Night Terrors, and I know like Night Terrors was kind of like a, like, it was like that weird block where it's like, hey, we're pausing everything, we're going to do this yeah. series. But I feel like if you were going to have a character you had to write Night Terrors for, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan is like the best character to say, I can write this and I can write this well. And you had a really specific line in Night Terrors that I was like, okay, I wonder how you came up with that line. The line when Hal Jordan's like conquering the fears that Night Terror uh is trying to like put on him and he says something along the lines of all this fear is because i just didn't know what needed to happen next or i didn't know what i needed to do next but once i just figured out what i need to do next i wasn't afraid anymore how did you come up with uh or like interpret like that's how how jordan was really afraid of like that was his true fear so much of I think about fear a lot just in terms of my own as a professional writer, <laughs> you know, as somebody who has moved out to Hollywood and, you know, made an, uh, uh, like my intention is to basically not be able to do anything else. So I have to do this, you know, like I am not qualified. Fear is so much of the unknown. It's so much of, of what you don't see. And and then when you can control the controllables and then let life play out as best it can, it becomes a lot easier. It's not to say I'm I'm terrified most of the time and mm-hmm. definitely terrified when I like send out a script. With the Night Terrors thing it was interesting to me because I, you know, I, I've said this before, but I'm the Mikey likes it of comic books. Like if they ask me to do anything, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Cause I'm <laughs> so excited to be doing comics. And, um, and then they told me like, oh, this, these, these villains are going to invoke fear of these. And I'm like, fear, like, Mm -hmm. do you know who I'm writing? Like that's not part of his thing, you know? And so I contextualizing that in terms of like having this bad guy trying to pin down what Hal's fear could be. And if you see it, it's like the fear of what was the the fear of, you know, uh, maybe I wasn't chosen for this purpose. What if this gone wrong fear of like, you know, his dad coming back and eating his brains or whatever, you know, but, <laughs> but like, you know, all those different things or parallax coming back. <clears throat> and that first issue is definitely like, you know, this misdirect because here I am, this is technically issue three of something I'm writing. People are wondering if I, if I know what this character is. And, uh, and I was just like, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be funny if the whole first issue is this thing's trying to pin down his fear, but it has to keep changing the channel because he can't because it's Hal Jordan. Right. And then the second issue is Hal going like, Oh man, you came to the wrong planet, like the (laughs) wrong dude in the wrong planet. And it's just him chasing him back. And so uh, there's some really great phraseology from like Alcoholics Anonymous and Al-Anon. And they're always like, you know, uh, fear is an acronym for, you know, false evidence appearing real. Um, there's, there's so much about the reason they say face your fears is because it's oftentimes it's not real. And, um, and with Hal, you know, understanding that like, not only is this not real, I just have to do the next right thing. Uh, it, it gives him the ability to overcome but that's the thing i i mean how at this point in his life how jordan at, you know after parallax and after becoming the specter and like all these things i think that it's weird when he puts on that ring i think the mask for him and the ring is so is so different because it hides so much of the schlubbiness that's actually inside of him like when he puts that on it's just like when he's in a jet when he's in a jet he's the best at what he's doing when he's outside the jet, he's got no money, you know, <laughs> it's like Carol's not, you know, uh, you know, he's trying to hit on her and she's just like, okay, weirdo, you know, and it, it, it's like, but that's the thing he's good at. That's the thing he can excel at. So I think, you know, at this point, especially with night terrors, you know, he's untouchable. 
It's like, when, oh, the, the game is you are trying to scare me and I am just not able to be scared anymore. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like I've gone through too much. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. And like, what's it been like writing how in this particular stage uh, of his life, his, his career as a lantern? Because I think what you've set up to them being quarantined on Earth also, you know, Hal's always been seen as this cocky, confident guy, and the girl he loves is engaged to someone else. It seems like the friends he has are, are really not on Earth outside of Kilowog. So yeah. it's kind of like an interesting thing where it's like Earth, although they have many Green Lanterns, it seems like <laughs> Earth has forgotten about the Green Lantern in some ways because they haven't been too much on there. So well, that's, like the, that's the, the thing. It's like all the 2814 Lanterns are not on Earth except for John and Hal. That's it. And and that's more of the mystery of like, where are these guys? Mm -hmm. And you'll see. They're like the guy gardener thing is gonna be great. I think, <laughs> I think we'll enjoy that. Um I think that that was important for me because I think for me to it, it's sort of like when I was writing Wally, like the first arc when I was writing Wally was really me trying to figure out his voice and figure out mm -hmm. where who he is and and what's it like being and it wasn't too hard because I, you know. I'm married. I have two kids. Like mm -hmm. it became a little easier, you know, finding yeah. a job is hard. Et yeah. <laughs> it's a little harder with Hal, but I kind of put my mind set very much in, you know, like, I was like, what, what stage of my life was I the most egocentric? And uh, at the same time had no business being egocentric, you know? And um and writing Hal as this person that's come home, it, it for me, we've Hal's been off the board a little bit for a long time, and we haven't seen him, and we I, I, bits and pieces, mm -hmm. mind you, but we haven't really talked about his his like mindset and where he's at emotionally, and I just I really thought about you know the fact that up in space he's this amazing hero. <laughs> And he's been from, gone from Earth for a long time. And it's just like, yeah, but being a hero up there, what does that mean at the end of the day if you have no one to come home to, you know? And mm -hmm. and I think that the the conversation that he's having with himself is like, what's the meaning of life here? You know, I'm out there fighting bad guys and it's great and it's wonderful, but like, is this fulfilling? Is this everything I need to be doing on top of... I've got these new bosses, you know, the United Planets. And so it's kind of a midlife crisis -y thing, guy type thing. Um, but very early on in the first issue, you, you see him go, but I know I'm a hero and that's something I can do. And that kind of inadvertently brings him to have this ring and start being Green Lantern again and kind of piece his life back together, but also kind of pursue after Carol, whether he should or shouldn't. You know, he's having these conversations about, well, she seems happy. Should I do this? Because inevitably I'm going to be pulled off world. And so he's having a lot of conflicting emotions. But it felt very real to me. It felt very real in terms of like, oh, these are the type of questions we have as people, you know? Um, what happens if my job to sends me away? Is it fair to the person that I'm with? You know, um, is it fair to be interrupting her life? Uh, and and what about the job that I'm really good at? It's gone. Nobody's hiring test pilots. Why would you hire a test pilot? <laughs> Sorry, I I drank a Red Bull and I coughed it up earlier. <laughs> I watched something funny. <laughs> now it's like shot. No, but, no. Uh, yeah, uh, funny so, enough, uh, you know, Tim Sheridan, who's who's been on the podcast, I, yeah. I was listening to an interview with him the other day, and he was like, oh, yeah, uh, Jeremy just drinks uh, six Red Bulls in the morning, and that's how he gets through his day. So <laughs> I think now that you say that, it, it makes Not so much many, sense. But it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember when I got to the Supernatural, they were like... Um, they were like, well, what do you drink? I go, oh, sugar-free Red Bull. And the next day there was like a flat of sugar-free Red Bull. And I'm like, this has happened. You know, was, uh, <laughs> uh, I try to, I've been trying to cut down, but I have so many deadlines that I'm like, well, maybe just one more. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's awesome that you sort of bring that up. And now that you kind of talk about that, I, I can't help but think about, you know, Top Gun Maverick and sort of the, the yeah. setup of that of sort of like, you have this guy that comes in and maybe sort of time has passed him by a little bit and stuff like that. And like, where where does he belong, you know, in, in as a hero that's saved the galaxy so many times, like, yeah. what does it look like to kind of 
save you know cat in the tree <laughs> even though some of the, yeah. the action that's going yeah. on is very big and stuff to him it may seem small because it's like hey i'm saving this little city block when i was saving right. worlds <clears throat> yeah that's i mean that's exactly right like yeah. first of all you know maverick uh top gun was so awesome <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that was influencing us in, yeah. in a way and it was just like but but to your point he is this policeman you know and he's supposed to be anyways okay. uh, he's in, in the the conception of him um and so so have we seen him you know patrolling his beat you yeah. know you're not always chasing after serial killers sometimes you're helping the kid get home you know yeah. and i think it humanizes them because a lot of the con the the feedback i was getting before i was even all writing them and i was just doing investigations you everybody's just like can we just get kyle rayner <laughs> you know <laughs> like okay i get it <clears throat> but like the thing that was like oh people aren't connecting with how they can't i i don't know if it's just too much of a hero they're not hearing his thoughts they're not understanding him as a as a human being and i thought well how can you do that you know and that's why i think the first moment we see hal is like he's saving these miners and it's like no he's doing real stuff of saving people and he's being a superhero and it doesn't necessarily have to be cosmic yet I mean, we're definitely setting the stage and I just wanted, you know, to, to write this book that's, that's very, you know, earthbound, like I said, mm -hmm. so that we can remember who Hal is um, as a character, <clears throat> because when we go to space, it's going to involve a lot more people. And if we're not invested in Hal as a character and invested in his journey on earth, then I don't know how much people are going to be invested with him in space. And so, uh, you know, whether I've done that or not, I don't know. But the, the, what, what the fact remains, it doesn't matter because their manicos aren't so good. I can write crap. And it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, it was it, when, even when I was talking to Jeff and we found out that that was happening and, and Jeff, we had worked with Zermanico on Flashpoint Beyond with Tim. Yeah. And we were all just like, oh my gosh, this guy's art is so good. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the piece of advice that Jeff had said, like, you know, you should limit the amount of panels you give him because he's so good that like, you know, that's really going to help it shine. And I'm like, you are a hundred percent right. And so I, I definitely pull back and if any panels added, it's him, you know, and I've, I've had a really good working relationship with him and I am not even kidding you. There's in no universe should I be writing panel one, you know, <laughs> page one panel page one panel two <clears throat> because he's such an incredible artist and he's an incredible like taking the panels and doing stuff and he just is so additive and it's such it, it feels like when I work in animation my job is to write this blueprint <clears throat> and we give it to the storyboard guys and then they plus it up and they make it better and he does that on the regular and and then it became kind of like oh my gosh is Zermanico my Green Lantern ring like I'm going <laughs> to make my constructs, you know, and, and, then, and like, I could think about it and then put it on paper. And then he just like makes it. And there's one, there's like a scene coming up that I was like, I was just so giddy because I knew, Oh my gosh, it's, I'm going to write it. And it's like, got to be just like bare bones, <laughs> but then he's going to draw it. And it's going to look so good. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's, it, it's super fun because he does this really neat kind of painting style that I just, I've never really seen. And, and it's so good that I'm terrified they're going to take him away. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I'm just absolutely every day. I'm like, I'm waiting for the call. It's like, well, now he needs to be on Batman. It's like, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, there's a scene in, I think it's issue five, the one that's the, the most recent one that's been out where yeah. Hal Jordan makes those two constructs in space. Oh, yeah, yeah, sends yeah. them out. And yeah. I was like, he's saying i've never done this before and i'm like bro you've done much harder stuff like <laughs> he's telling me you're just kind of like showing off for for carol like oh, i don't know if i can do this but I'm well gonna do I, it. I don't know i mean he's done two contracts but i'm like has he done something that's like hundreds and thousands of miles like miles apart at the same yeah. time he has to incrementally move like that that's was true the, that's true that was the thing that i was kind of like so you know you hear about people talking about how hard it would be to knock a, a missile out of the sky or or a, you know it's like hitting a bullet with a bullet and like the idea that like he can make two constructs that go the opposite side of earth and he can only if he moves them a fraction of the inch they're going to move gigantic 
yeah. you know uh, things and maybe i didn't articulate it as well as i should have no no it was it was definitely well written like in the comic because like i totally understood like it's like the physics of you explaining like yeah. hey smaller yeah. smaller changes are actually bigger than they actually are right right right, right. Uh, right. but that's a really really well drawn scene and the scene i'm hoping oh. to see in the next one is yeah. the final showdown that we're gonna have between sinestro oh. and guys how <laughs> and- it's gonna be a uh a- a 22 page like action movie <laughs> <laughs> well and for me the most interesting thing and like i can't wait to see how it's done is you know the last issue sinestro has been trying to power up his yellow ring of fear and he can't because Hal Jordan is doing his job. Right. And he's able to harness rage without like a red power ring. And right. so I'm really interested to see like, hey, is there something going on with Earth at the moment that's letting these users tap into other emotions? Or is Sinestro just, hey, I've worn a white lantern ring in the past. I can kind of just do this now. I see, I see, I can see you fishing. I can yeah. see you. <laughs> <laughs> I I will say that like I think we've hinted at for a long time uh that something's going on with the emotional spectrum for sure. Yeah. And um and but that's part of the fun and that's yeah. part of the mystery <laughs> because um what do you do? I mean, what do you I come into this book that's like Jeff and Tomasi and everybody have built this Venditti like have built this giant mythology of there's these central power batteries and there's these tribes and there's these different emotional spectrums and stuff. And so it's like, how do I, how do I add to it? Or do I add to it? Or do I mess with it? Or do I subtract from it? Or do I deconstruct it? You know? Yeah. And so I think it will be like, I don't think all your answers will be, I don't think all your questions will be answered in the next issue. I think they'll pose some questions. I, but then you'll get some answers, but definitely like six is crazy. Seven is you're going to get tons of answers. <laughs> and then eight and nine, completely off the rails. And, <laughs> and, and then and then it's going to pose more questions. And then after that, we're like moving into, uh, uh, you know, what we're doing for this next year. And so we planned Green Lantern until 25. Um, you know, and, and hopes uh, that it goes, that I stay on longer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, it all, all comes down to sales and whatever. But I'm really excited because I think, you know, the people that have been clamoring for more cosmological things and more space things and what's going on in the universe and, and that stuff, you're going you're gonna to see it. Whether you like it is a different question, uh, <laughs> but I'm super excited. I'm super excited because I think I'm taking some big swings. I think we're all excited about where where it could be and and the mystery of finding out where everybody is and what's the deal with Hal's ring and why can Sinestro, you know, sun, suddenly manifest uh, Red Lantern rage? Like, there's a lot of those questions that it's not like I, I haven't thought about it, you know? So I guess take comfort in that. It's not yeah. like I'm just <laughs> randomly going, yes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. And I know, I, I, I mean, I've seen that happen as a fan. It's like, wait, what? No, that's not how it works, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm taking a lot of that into consideration. Yeah. yeah. And I know you took a lot of that in consideration when you were writing the Flash run. Yeah. Uh, and and pretty much everything you just told me just means that Christmas kind of came a little early for me. So because <laughs> uh, I was like, man, after that last issue, I was like, I really want to know how this is happening. Cause oh, I'm, man. I'm a die die hard like Jeff Johns Green Lantern fan. I've yeah. owned all those volumes, read them multiple times. And so yeah. anytime I read a Green Lantern comic, like his the the ending that he kind of writes for me is like the ending. I'm like, that's how it's supposed to go, right? Not really thinking that people can change these endings. Right, 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 right. I mean, right. And like <laughs> I said, as far as like answers specific answers in this next issue you're not necessarily going to get specific mm. answers. <laughs> that's okay because that just means i have issue seven to look forward right. to even right. more and and also the, I, i'm not done with sinestro you know and he's my favorite villain in all of dc because that dynamic between him and Hal of how they're kind of best friends but they're also mortar enemies but they're also like right. the most powerful individuals kind of in the universe at the same time yeah when it comes a, to the emotional spectrum it's a weird thing because it is this like I don't know even know how to describe it it's almost like it is it is almost familial like it's almost like you know here's this guy that kind of taught him the ropes 
totally evil you know done horrible, horrible <laughs> things and then there's there's some times where i think there's this weird begrudging respect right and it's sort of like Sinestro coming out and, and giving this monologue about what he thinks about earth you know what what he thinks it's like there might be truth to some of that um there's always truth in what Sinestro would do in terms of like listen these people are bad i need to instill order but i'm doing that through fear and that's where Hal, you know, separates, right? Hal, Hal's going, yeah, everything's bad. We need to help them by example. And Sinestro's like, that'll take too long. Let's, st <laughs> you know, let's stop this now. And so there's, it's a conversation, I think, as humans, we have all the time. It's like how much, how much control, you know, it's, it's, it's the founding of our nation, right? It's like, how much control do we give the government? How much, how much freedom versus control? You know, it's that kind of conversation over and over again. It's like the more freedom you have, there's going to be a lot of bad things, but freedom, or do you give more control and less freedom? And it's like this tightrope that we all walk. And I think that's how, and, and, uh, Sinestro are doing that, that dance a lot, but they have so much history too. Yeah. Oh, and it's yeah. like so full of, and I don't know if it'll come out, but in issue seven, I have some good uh, stuff between them, I think. Because I, I you know, the, even when we're talking about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's not unlike having an older brother. <laughs> you know? It's like who thinks he's right all the time. And you're just like, no, you're wrong, you know, and then but but evil, you know, I mean, <laughs> and I say evil because. Because I don't know if Sinestro has like a proper moral compass, like he's willing to kill to 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 instill order and i don't know if that's okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know I, I love how how gray it is you know yeah i mean when he corrupted saint walker and yeah. harnessed the power of the of, of the blue lanterns to like make the yellow lanterns like be able to like heal and everything and that i was like gosh dang it there's like nothing this guy's gonna not do but also right. it's like people there's like a certain weird portion of the universe and uh his individual comic that are like we really appreciate everything you've done for us yeah. and it's yeah yeah well i i mean Korrigar in, in a way is this you know when you accept the rules Korrigar is great you know <laughs> there, there's it's sort of like when i was in china and i was like gosh it's so clean here and it was because yeah no one's gonna litter they're terrible <laughs> <laughs> you know like, like you know what i mean or like like uh where's the place that got, that kid got caned uh i forget where it was but like okay. you don't litter you don't yeah. do anything because the the punishment's so egregious yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and i mean so you're living under quote unquote fear maybe but like if you're you're if you're okay with it it's like oh well it's a better society because i don't know I don't know. It's like fascinating to me. <laughs> well, that question is what makes Sinestro sort of an interesting villain. And I'm, right. I'm excited to see more leather jacket Sinestro. So if you can keep that going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoodie, 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 hoodie man. Yeah, hoodie. I mean, listen, he, it's <laughs> interesting because he's on Earth and he's stuck on Earth and he's like, you know, <laughs> it would be like the, being the president of the United States and you landed somewhere and you're like, uh, I got to get back to my country. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, what's going on he has yeah. no idea yeah. so that's so but you know sort of kind of i see you wearing a mad cave shirt and i i, I can't yes. you know leave this interview without asking you about flash gordon which is another yeah, cosmic uh, story <laughs> and really exciting when i saw that announcement at new york comic con it's almost like they kind of got a list it's like who's the best person for the job and they literally went to the top of the list and got you so what's i know you can't talk about it too much because i know I can talk about it Get this. Let's yeah. talk about Listen, it. tell us the whole story you know the whole arc issues one through five yeah. <laughs> what, what's that like sort of writing that i know um you're a big fan and sort of to be a part of that franchise it's weird it's weird because it's like i really like pulp sci-fi i really mm -hmm. you know the first stuff i read was like that was in that genre was the john carter mars series and mm -hmm. kind of edgar rice burroughs stuff i mean i grew up with like buck rogers you know the tv mm -hmm. series and obviously the flash Gordon movie um so i really love the idea of this kind of like square jawed sci-fi hero it's not necessarily has powers but but I'm also not retelling the origin story. I'm I'm kind of like, we're moving this forward. And Free Comic Book Day, actually, I don't know what I'm allowed to say. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm super excited about doing it. It's interesting, though, because King Features, who owns Flashboard, has certain, like, 
rules and things mm. that they 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 want us to steer clear of things that we we can push into so inadvertently that's kind of shaped some of the story and some of it i think will annoy some people but as long as they're they know me it's like i'm not intentionally trying to annoy anyone mm. and i think i'm going to tell a, a really fun story i'm not you know I'm I'm Jeremy. I like mm -hmm. to make action adventure, like you know, yeah, yeah. with a couple of jokes and um, explore the Flash Gordon universe and have this character that's just, you know, by sheer athleticism and like, there's no real reason at Flash Jordan Gordon should be saving the universe. Mm -hmm. Like he's just a dude, right? Yeah. But I love that. I love the aspect that he's this, you know, athletic heroic guy that gets thrown into these things and just really. Um, really just wants to save the day you know and so uh it's just gonna be fun i think it's gonna be fun and uh i'm really excited to see how it looks because i haven't seen pages yet um but yeah man it's it, it, we've got a pretty big arc planned out so if you like pulps if you like pulp sci-fi by by pulp sci-fi i mean that kind of thing where you're reading old science fiction and it's not very like it's not super world building. It's more like crazy stuff, you know. Yeah. Like I remember reading uh, John Carter Mars. It was like these people that were cloned without heads, and they had brains with claws that stuck onto them. It's like what's happening, you know? Like <laughs> weird, like sci-fi things of uh, that you just go let your imagination go and just have a good time. Just whatever this is, like however improbable it could be, you know, it could be just really, really fun. So I'm excited. I'm excited. It'll be fun to do like. Green Lantern and Flash Gordon simultaneously. I'll be so burnt out that I'll just want to do something Old West. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, or I desperately have a fantasy pitch for DC that no one seems to want to listen to. <laughs> is it a Jonah Hex pitch? Because if it I was going to say, Jonah Hex sounds great. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like Jonah Hex, but no, uh, I, yeah. I have a, a yeah, crazy. Yeah, crazy. yeah, of course, of course. But, you know, the craziest thing you could write in that Flash Gordon book is, you know, the Jets winning the Super Bowl, you know, Flash Gordon. Winning. <laughs> I think that's probably crazier than any of the, <laughs> the things you could write that's in funny. there. You know, well, that's so. the real question. People are asking me, like, am I pulling, am I going to pull and just do Flash from the movie or am i doing like the polo playing flash from the original series mm -hmm. and i'm like why not both no i don't know maybe he's the <laughs> you know the uh the bow nose of all sports like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be great well jeremy thank you so much for coming on we've had so much fun talking to you about yes, green, you. green lantern and, and flash gordon we both can't wait to read them when they come out i like thank i said you. earlier you kind of gave me an early christmas gift and built that excitement <laughs> back up uh to get the next couple issues of green lantern um but is there anything else that you're working on you'd like to talk about or where can people follow you on social media to stay up with you yeah i mean listen you can find me space kicker anywhere like you know on uh instagram or twitter or i have a spacekicker.com which is my website um and i'm doing jay garrick which i'm really excited about uh we're on issue i've written issue five of six part of the new golden age uh along with venditti's doing sandman tim's doing uh alan scott so that's been really really fun so green lantern flash gordon jay garrick flash and uh hopefully some other stuff there's some filmy stuff and animation stuff that's a little ways out but uh yeah awesome well jeremy thank you so much for your time thank you so much for coming on and with that bada boom bada boom bada boom <laughs> thank you for listening to the bada boom podcast keep the conversation going on instagram tiktok and twitter Get in the comments on our YouTube channel and let us know what you'd like to hear next. And please subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen.